As fighting continues near hospitals in the Gaza Strip, US President Joe Biden has warned that the biggest Gazan hospital must be protected. He's called on Israel to take less intrusive action at Al Shifa. Israel alleges Hamas militants are using medical centers as command bases. Witnesses say Israeli tanks have surrounded Al Shifa, where doctors say they've been without water or electricity for days. Filmed just a few days ago, this video apparently shot inside Gaza's Al Shifa hospital gives a sense of just how many people have been crowded inside. The World Health Organization says this is no longer a functioning hospital. It says there's no more fuel for generators, vital life-saving equipment is no longer working, and according to medical staff at the facility, dozens of newborns have now been removed from incubators and placed together on beds in the open. So they are literally in, in, in a very bad situation where you slowly kill them unless someone interferes to adjust or to improve their situation. But these are very critical kind of cases where you have to be uh, very sensitive in dealing with them. You have to take care of each of them in a very uh, special way. But currently, they are all in open space. They are all with each other with no infection control measures. Israel's ground offensive has been moving ever closer to the gates of Al Shifa Hospital in recent days, with the US president joining the growing international calls for restraint. Well, uh, you know, I uh, have not been reluctant in expressing my concerns what's going on. Um, and it's my hope and expectation that uh, there will be uh, less intrusive action relative to the hospital. The hospital must be protected. Israel's military has accused Hamas of using hospitals to hide command centers and weapons, and it's now released footage of what it says is a children's hospital in Gaza. The tunnel is let down more than 20 meters down. The robot found a door, a door that is bulletproof, it's, uh, it's explosive proof. Alleging Hamas had held hostages in rooms beneath the hospital. We are now in the area of the basement of the hospital. Along with a cache of weapons and explosives. I want you to understand, this kind of gear is a gear for a major fight. These are explosives. These are vests, vests with explosives. Yeah, it's a body vest for terrorists to explode on forces among hospitals among patients. Hospitals are given special protection during times of war, but Israel argues that Hamas's use of medical facilities as cover overrides any legal safeguards as it intensifies its ground offensive inside the Gaza Strip. I'm joined now by Andreas Krieg from the School of Security Studies at King's College London. What's your assessment of this video released by the Israeli military's chief in which he tries to show Hamas is using hospitals as an instrument of war? Well, I mean, it's, it's a known fact that uh, Hamas is hiding among the civilian population and has also used, um, you know, dual use infrastructure, which is civilian infrastructure for their operations. But we also need to be very, very careful about Israel's use of information. We're in a war over narratives. Uh, the IDF has made repeated and has released repeated uh, pieces of mis and disinformation. If we look at that video in particular, we have to exercise a lot of scrutiny. Israel is a party to this conflict. They have a motivation to take a particular stance in this, to make themselves look better than they actually are. They unfortunately in this war have shown that veracity is not necessarily one of their main ways of doing it, if, uh, of, of presenting information. If you look at the shaft in particular, we don't know if that's a shaft that goes to a tunnel. We don't know if that's a maintenance shaft. Some of the uh, re releases of videos last week that were released by the IDF in, afterwards were shown to be actually just maintenance shafts that were actually not tunnels that were going into anywhere into a Hamas infrastructure. So we don't know that. 
Yeah, then the video is doctored. So then on a lot of occasions we've seen cut, cuts made. So we don't know where this tunnel is leading. Apparently we are then underneath, we're shown under in, in a, in, into a basement that's underneath a hospital. We don't really know where this is. Um, also the evidence that's pre being presented here is very, very dubious. It's certainly not conclusive. We're seeing diapers and we're seeing bottles. That's quite clear that people, civilians were staying there, but that's true because civilians were hiding in hospitals and had to hide in hospitals for the last couple of weeks uh, during the bombardment. So that's no evidence for anything. Then we've seen a roust or a candle on the wall in Arabic where all we see is, 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 is basically the days of the week in Arabic. And that's being presented as evidence that this is uh, a hideout for Hamas. Again, not, not it, it makes it very, very uh, 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 dubious and in, in, in many ways undermines the credibility of what the IDF is trying to present here. And, and it's very important that we that we keep a clear eye out. We've seen videos being doctored by the ADF. We've seen these kind of staged uh, uh, conversations that allegedly were supposed to show uh, Hamas fighters um, that were intercepted. It turned out they were scripted. So we have to be very careful in the way that we're looking at that evidence, so to speak. And, and obviously, yes, we're seeing that some of the arms were, were basically put there. We don't know if the arms were actually found there or if they were dumped there. So the, the, the video in itself has to be uh, you know, kind of dealt with it. So, so it has to be, you know, scrutinized in the same way that we would scrutinize Russian information or, or Hamas information. Uh, scrutinize this next one for me then. The Israeli military has also released a video taken from the air in which it says a Hamas fighter is using a rocket launcher outside Al Quds Hospital. Yes, I've seen that video as well. I think that that is you know, being geolocated. I think that it seems to be um, uh, the right location and the right time. Um, and it's you know an active war zone. I don't think it's it's surprising that Hamas in an active war zone is operating all over uh, the 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 territory and all over the infrastructure. This is obviously a war crime. Hamas is hiding, as I said initially, are hiding among the civilian population. But that still doesn't mean that Israel has been uh, absolved of its um, uh, kind of of, uh, you know, its duty to differentiate between civilians and um, and and fighters here. So you can't just bomb a hospital just because you're being shot at from that hospital. Unfortunately, that's not how international law works. And we also should bear in mind that these so-called human shields are passive human shields. There's a difference between active and passive human shields. Mm -hmm. Passive human shields are those people who are not known that they are human shields. They're being abused by Hamas as human shields. And that means that the attacker, in this case, the IDF, has to really exercise a lot of caution when they're going in there. And I think that's what the US president means. It means don't use area effect weapons, don't use artillery, don't use air uh, um, air dropped ordinance against these targets, but move in with infantry. And even that will be messy because obviously Hamas is operating from among the civilian population. Lastly, Andres, can you also just tell me, is it accepted consensus in the intelligence community that Hamas does hide command facilities under civilian infrastructure? Now, you need to understand that the entire Gaza Strip, not just Gaza City, but the entire Gaza Strip is a an, is an infrastructure of hundreds of kilometers of tunnels and bunkers and command centers all over what is essentially a fairly densely populated area. And some of these command st structures will be, you know, inevitably under civilian infrastructure. Some of them will be underneath or near hospitals. So that video that was released by the IDF yesterday suggests, though, that that bunker was some 100 meters away or 200 meters away from the hospital hospital. Um, so it's difficult to say that they're actually hiding it underneath the hospital, but certainly close to a hospital. And and that, that's deliberate. Hamas doesn't, you know, that's kind of what an insurgency force would do to kind of hide themselves among civilians to make sure they can't be struck. Um, so, you know, it still doesn't absolve Israel from the duty to, to basically differentiate between civilians and, and combatants and make sure that collateral damage is absolutely minimized. And the IDF has unfortunately not done this because they've always relied on the one argument of saying Hamas is hiding among the civilians and the burden of, uh, of of protecting civilians is then being shifted to Hamas, which is not true. The burden of protecting civilians is both on Hamas and the IDF. Andreas Creek, security analyst, thank you very much for chiming in on DW News. Thank you. Well, Aliona Sinyenko works with the International Committee of the Red Cross. She told me more about the situation in hospitals in southern Gaza. 
even in the south of Gaza, in the hospital where our surgical team is working now, uh, the situation is uh, ex extremely difficult. Uh, they stay awake for several hours every night, unable to sleep because of the explosions that take place uh, nearby. Um, they are also running short on the essential supplies like anesthetics, like dressing material, as they receive uh, people with horrendous wounds, a lot of burned patients, and unfortunately many of them are children. With tens of thousands of people continuing to flee from the north to the south, are you equipped uh, to help all of these people? This is extremely dire situation and today the amount of the humanitarian assistance that we are managing to bring into Gaza is simply not sufficient to face the massive crisis uh, that is unfolding. We are now have uh, more than 100,000 displaced people in extremely crowded conditions in the south of Gaza and many of them are also in the hospital where they think they are safer than everywhere else. And, uh, these people have nothing. There's uh, lack of food, lack of water. So uh, the short answer is no, we are not mm. equipped. We need more humanitarian assistance. How many trucks of aid are you managing to get through the Gaza, uh, into the Gaza Strip at the moment? We have managed uh, in the past month to bring uh, over some, uh, something like 25 trucks of uh, humanitarian assistance and this is far from being sufficient because if you come uh, situation before this current escalation there were roughly 500 trucks per day uh, reaching the strip so what we are bringing is uh, extremely small compared to the level of needs so just 25 trucks in, in, in over a month now um, Israel claims that Hamas is using Gaza hospitals to hide their command centers. We were just showing some footage from uh, the defense forces before. Have your colleagues on the ground seen anything that would prove these claims? We're a humanitarian actor. We're not an intelligence organization to be able to prove or dis. Uh, or right or wrong any claims made by any party in this conflict. What we are seeing is the uh, in deep humanitarian crisis unfolding and uh, our job is to advocate for the respect of the international humanitarian law and also to remind all the parties that uh, we must not forget the humanitarian imperative that there are women, children, the elderly and that civilians in the north of Gaza and in the Gaza city, they are protected by the international humanitarian law. Aldiona Zinyenko with the International Committee of the Red Cross. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.